This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's talk about the eight shots you should always be taking during bride prep. If you're new to wedding photography, bride prep or getting ready is the beginning of your wedding day. Generally, this is before the bride has put on her dress and everything you'll need to capture while she gets ready up until the ceremony. So let's go over these eight shots that you absolutely must be getting at every wedding during bride prep. Starting out with the flat lay. Your flat lay detail shots are one of the first things I always do at a wedding day. If you haven't had a chance to check out my full wedding day videos, which you can check out right up above, I always show up early so that I can do a flat lay photo before anything else is happening. This way I don't miss candid moments and I can focus on people after I've done all the details. I have a flat lay video that I put together on my Patreon, so if you wanna go check that out, make sure to check the description below. You can sign up for Patreon right now. But aside from that, let me give you a couple of tips for your flat lay photos. First off, having a flat lay mat is super helpful. I use some by Chasing Stone and I absolutely love them. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't know why, I guess they don't sponsor. <laughs> but I absolutely love their flat lay mats and highly recommend them to anyone who might want one. After a flat lay mat, make sure to tell your couple before the day to get all their details ready for you so that when you show up, you're not hunting around for all the pieces for the flat lay. Generally, I'll tell my brides they have an invitation and maybe even two of the invitations if it has a back and a front, the shoes, the jewelry, any family heirlooms, maybe the garter, a cute perfume if they have one, and just any other trinkets they might have. On top of that, one of the biggest tips I can tell you is to ask them if they can get some extra scrap flowers from their florist. A lot of times when the florist shows up and they bring the bouquets, there's a lot of scrap flowers left around or they can just bring some scraps for you. Having a little bit of greenery to add to your flat lay is super, super helpful and it really fills out the whole flat lay. Here are a couple examples of the flat lays that I generally do at my weddings. So again, if you have a couple who's really into their details, make sure you get these flat lay shots and you make them look nice. If you all have any questions about flat lays as well, definitely let me know in the comments below. Next up is going to be the dress shot. We already absolutely know we're gonna be taking a shot of the dress, but make sure you always get this photo. Again, I show up early so I can take these photos and not be bothered by anything else in the room. And also let's talk about a couple of tips for your dress shots. First off, do not hang them on windows. That's like the first thing everyone wants to do, but that's actually very challenging lighting wise. You have a straight up white dress backlit. So unless you're using a flash, it's gonna be hard to make sure that your dress is lit well and the background window isn't totally blown out. I actually have a video where I talk about dress shots and tips for dress shots that you definitely, definitely should check out. I'll have that right up above. On top of not hanging on a window, make sure you hang somewhere where you can get a nice wide shot. Close-up shots are great and all, but at the end of the day, the dress is just a hanging piece of cloth. We want the whole photo to look nice, and being able to hang it in a place where you can shoot wide really helps out with that. And last but not least, if you're not bringing a hanger with you, make sure your bride has a nice hanger. I can't tell you how many times I show up to a wedding and the bride has the normal ugly plastic hanger still on the dress and they didn't bring anything else with them. It just totally kills the vibe of the photo, so make sure you bring like a wooden one with you or something, or remind them to have a nice hanger as well. After the dress shot, the next most important shot is going to be a robe shot. So if your bride and her bridesmaids have matching robes, make sure to get this shot. They're always fun and cute shots, but you have to make sure you plan for this and do it before everyone starts getting dressed. If you've ever heard me talk about wedding days, these are the reasons why I write my own timelines because I know when everything's gonna happen and I can remind them and the planner of stuff like robe shots. For your robe shots, make sure you take everyone to a well-lit area. Generally, you'll see me step outside, maybe in front of the venue or wherever they're getting dressed and take the photo there. But a bad habit that a lot of photographers will do is they don't wanna be too intrusive, so they'll just take the shot wherever they can, and what happens is you end up having less light. Remember, getting a great photo and having the right kind of light trumps everything. So again, make sure you have communication with your bride so that she understands what you're doing is helping to get the best photos rather than trying to change up the whole day. And when you do that, you're able to get great photos like these.
Make sure to always do the rope shot right before everyone needs to start getting dressed. So this is after hair and makeup, right before we wanna start putting the dress on, you take the photo real quick and then you can have the bridesmaids go ahead and get dressed. Also make sure to keep these photos fun as well. Since this is her and her girls hanging out at the beginning of the day, make it a fun photo also. After you complete your rope shots, now we're on to the bride getting her dress on with her mother. With these photos, the first and most important thing is to make sure that mom puts on her dress before the bride does. This is again stuff you should be communicating to everyone in the room while every section of the day is moving forward. Have mom get her dress on first, and then you can start taking your photos when the bride puts her dress on. Generally, I'm shooting these shots fairly wide with my 23 F2, which is a 35 equivalent, and I'm just capturing all the emotions of both the bride and her mother. For all my tight shots, I'm using my 35 F2, which is a 50 mil equivalent. So I'm using both of these lenses at the same time, close-ups of the buttons getting buttoned up, close-ups of smiles, and then full wide symmetrical shots of them putting the dress on. For these photos, make sure you find a location that looks nice and also is lit well. I say this all the time, but you need to be hand-holding your weddings. So don't just let everyone put on their clothes wherever they want to. Find a nice area of the room that is lit well and is clean so that you can have nice, beautiful photos. This is our job as a photographer, and you need to make sure you're doing that instead of just being a fly on the wall the whole day. After putting the dress on, we move on to the bride putting on her jewelry. This will generally include earrings, necklaces, and bracelets. What I like to do for my earring shots is I'll have her put those on by herself. While someone helping her is nice and sometimes they actually do need some help, it's not the best photo. I just don't like the way it looks. Whereas her putting on her earrings herself just looks really nice and clean. However, for bracelets and necklaces, you can have bridesmaids or the mother of the bride help out with that. This is a great way to get everyone involved as well so no one is feeling left out. So you'll start with mom putting on the dress and then bridesmaids helping out with the jewelry, have the bride put her earrings on herself. These are some of the results of that. And again, don't forget to get your wide shots as well as your close-up shots. One thing you should never forget to do with all of your beautiful wedding photos is make a website just as beautiful to put those photos on. And you can do that with this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform that helps you easily build your website. Having an online presence is extremely important as a wedding photographer, and Squarespace is hands down the easiest way to do it. With beautiful templates, analytics, and commerce, you have everything you could ever need as a photographer on Squarespace. And if you ever need help, they have great customer service as well, so it's really easy to get help with everything you need and build your website extremely quickly. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. Now that we've put on the jewelry, the next thing up is gonna be the garter. Now, not everyone has a garter, but it is pretty typical for most weddings. And make sure with the garter shot that your bride is comfortable with those photos as well. For garter shots, make sure your bride is comfortable with having these photos as well. Since they are gonna be lifting their dress up a little bit, you don't wanna be taking photos all the way up the dress. However, you will be capturing from like the calf down. Generally for these photos, I like to take close-ups. I don't really shoot wide too often unless the scene looks extremely beautiful. Also again, a bridesmaid is probably gonna be helping out with these photos as well. So make sure to ask one of them to help put the garter on for those shots. After your garter shots comes the shoe shots. Again, this will be bridesmaids helping out and just let them know to take their time while they're taking the photos. Make sure you're getting a couple of wide shots and also close-ups. And I absolutely love a close-up of shoes being put on. For your shoe shots as well, make sure that the bride is interacting with her bridesmaids and laughing. If you need to direct them a little bit, don't be afraid to do that because you want these shots to look fun rather than just someone sitting there and having someone put their shoes on them. And last but not least, the shot you should definitely be taking, which a lot of people forget about, is gift opening and or letter reading. So I absolutely love it when couples trade gifts or write letters to each other. And a lot of times you'll have to remind your couple to do this, but having a letter that they can break out and read and get in their emotions right before the ceremony not only makes the day more memorable for them, but it also makes for really awesome photos. For these shots, like with everything else, you're picking a spot that has great lighting 
and generally the bride is going to be sitting down. Just make sure when you choose a chair for her to sit in, it's a nice looking chair and something that doesn't distract from the whole scene. With these photos, there's not gonna be much directing at all. Basically, you set her up where she's gonna be, where the lighting is great, sit her down, and have her just read through her note. While that is happening, I'm shooting wide and also close and just waiting for all the emotion to come out. Again, these are some of my favorite photos. So if you wanna have a lot of great photos, remind your couples to do this so that you have a chance to have nice photos of them getting emotional, reading letters to each other. And those are the eight photos you should absolutely be taking at every wedding during your bride prep section. If you like this video, definitely make sure to hit the like but also if I get enough likes, I'll make this same video for the groom prep. In my opinion, bride prep and groom prep are probably the most stressful parts of a wedding day for photographers. And it's the part of the day where everything leans on you extremely heavily. And if you don't have your hands on that part of the wedding day, it can all fall apart and everyone will take forever to get ready. So really, make sure you study this part of the day. Check out my full wedding videos, which again, you can check them out up above and just watch how I command that part of the day and you will have no troubles at all. If you're a wedding photographer yourself and you have any other suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And thank you all for watching. I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.